Now we have the Seven Kingdoms proper out of the way, we can take a look at some of the other areas of Westeros. The Crownlands technically doesn't fall under any of the other kingdoms, so I thought why not give it its own video. Joffrey Baratheon, the slimy Westeros supervillain and false king, speaks with a posh evil southern accent, somewhere between Mr Burns and Commodus from Gladiator. It's not much at all. Please, have another cup. You sure you're great? Yes. To celebrate my name day. Have two, have as much as you like. His brother Tommen, the grown-up version, speaks with a very posh RP accent befitting other royals such as Joffrey or Redley. My mother would like to see her daughter's final resting place. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Grace. That's not possible. Not yet. When will it be possible? When she's fully atoned for her sins. You cut off her hair and marched her naked through the streets in front of the whole city. Marcella Baratheon's an odd one. As a child, she seemed to have a northern twang, but the later version spoke with an accent much like her siblings. I know. About you and Mother. I think the part of me always knew. And I'm glad. More D&D &D continuity fails. Davos Seaworth is as geordie as they come, despite hailing from Flea Bottom in King's Landing, in the south. You're not a young man, Salador. And correct me if I'm wrong, most pirates don't grow old. A note for our American viewers, geordie means from Newcastle. If you've ever had the misfortune of seeing these woeful, well past their prime idiots on your screens, then that's the geordie accent. Sir Dantus of House Hollard, despite his house colours seeming to be the American flag, Sir Dantus, the lovable drunken clown, speaks with an estuary accent. Sorry, Your Grace. Uh, my deepest apologies. That's when he's not spluttering wine everywhere in front of the royal family. Lollis Stokeworth is so wet she should be the sigil of House Tully, but she sounds posher than most of the other characters on the show. Fair play to the actress for giving it her all in her one scene. What is the most important thing, don't you agree? We're going to need pigeon pies. That's what they eat in the capital, don't they? Don't they? Janos Slint, the stalwart, trustworthy captain of the Gold Cloak, speaks with what seems to be a southern accent, but we get some scouse creeping in. Are you drunk? Not have my honour questioned by an imp? Scouse is what people from Liverpool sound like. You know, like the Beatles, or if you hate your life, Google Scylla Black. Megan, the mother of one of Bobby B's many, many bastard children, sounds a bit too well-spoken and RP for your average King's Landing prostitute. He wasn't that sort of man, my lord. He just wanted to know if the child was happy, healthy. Gendry, the blacksmith's apprentice and wielder of a ridiculous fantasy warhammer, speaks with an estuary accent. About my work, first. I was being treated well. I liked it here. His blacksmith master speaks with a nondescript southern accent. As you wish, my lord. Gendry! Olivar, the male prostitute, seems to be the only gay man in King's Landing, lending his services to Oberyn, Loras, and the High Septon, amongst others. Speaks in a plummy RP accent. Hey. Oliver. <laughs> the fat boy that Arya kills has his lines dubbed in for some reason. Standard southern child actor voice. There she is. What do you want? Want you, wolf girl. Come here. Leave me be. My father's a lord. He'll reward you. She'll reward me. The queen. Stay away! Hot Pie sounds like he could be from 1980s Grange Hill with his estuary TV accent. <laughs> Doing with a sword. Maybe he's a little squire. He ain't no squire, look at him. He looks like a girl. Lommy, another orphan from King's Landing, speaks much the same way as Hot Pie up until he gets a needle in the neck. No. You gotta carry me. Alright. Rorge's origin is unknown, but we first meet him being transported to the wall from King's Landing. Speaks in a gruff Cockney accent reminiscent of Bill Sykes from the various Oliver Twist films. Little shit. Get us beer! Viserys Targaryen sounds as posh and evil as Joffrey. I can see why he was killed off early, you can't have two of them running around. Is it true they die with their horses? I wouldn't ask Karl Droger. 
You take me for a fool. I take you for a king. Daenerys Targaryen sounds very upper class. Must have had some expensive governesses while in exile. We will lay siege to the capital surrounding the city on all sides. Cersei will have the Iron Throne, but no food for her army or the people. Rhaegar Targaryen gets few lines in a flashback, but he sounds like royalty. She is mine. From this day until the end of my days. Cersei's handmaiden, Bernadette, not only copies Her Grace's Mr. Spock haircut, but also her accent, or tries to. At once, Your Grace. The head pyromancer has a great voice like a wizard old sorcerer. The actor used to do the audiobooks, and they're definitely worth checking out. No, I have not conducted this experiment. It, it could well be true. The substance burns so hot, it melts wood, stone, even steel. High Septon one before having his arm ripped off by starving city folk, spoke in a pompous, posh accent reminiscent of Mace Tyrell. May the crown give her wisdom. May the warrior give her courage. His successor was much the same, if not a tad more pious sounding. As the High Septon of the Faith of the Seven, I give voice to the will of the gods and am their foremost servant in this world. An insult to me is an insult to the gods. An assault on my person is an assault on our very religion. You were assaulted. I was, by those fanatics who call themselves sparrows. The High Sparrow speaks in an upper-class RP accent as befitting a man who has basically become the Pope of this setting. The gods' judgment is fierce, but also fair. Overall, I am awarding the Crown Lands a well-deserved seven King's Landings out of seven. Join me next time for more of this enjoyable nonsense when we cover the Citadel and the Maesters in general. In this series, examining the accents of Westeros, as featured in the TV show, well, you know the drill by now. This week it's time to have a look at the Maesters, those weird, probably celibate raven wranglers who seem to hold a high seat of office in every major city and castle in the land. Maester Aemon Targaryen, the erstwhile heir to the throne and brother of Egg from the Duncan Egg stories, is a very old man who has been Maester of the Night's Watch seemingly forever. He speaks with a faltering RP accent. But when I heard that he killed my brother's son and his poor son and the children, even the little children. Who are you? Grand Maester Pycelle, a conniving old sod that has a major hard-on for both House Lannister and Ladies of the Night, speaks in an affected old man RP voice most of the time. Except when he feels the need to drop the act, then he sounds much more sure of himself. Never! Look, it's a falsehood! I swear it! It wasn't me! These are your new chambers. A little cramped, perhaps, but you don't need much room, do you? Maester Lewin of Winterfell is a kindly old man who tutors Bran and has a nice line in dry humour when it comes to Theon. Also speaks in an RP accent. Notice a theme starting to build here. Words we do not sow. Lords? The Greyjoys. Famed for their skills at archery, navigation and lovemaking. <laughs> and failed rebellions. Maester Cresson has a wonderful voice. Yes, it's RP, and it's a shame we don't see more of him. Since that boar killed his brother, every lord wants a coronation. I don't serve the others. I serve Stannis. As do I. But loyal service means telling hard truths. Maester Walken has his good mood cut short when Ramsay rather rudely stabs his father Roos to death right in front of him. How did he die? Poisoned by his enemies. This Citadel Maester that gives Sam a hard time when he arrives is, I believe, dubbed over as the actor is Danish feels off and the voice actor they use sounds standardly posh. The Archmaester will discuss these irregularities with you. In the meantime, you are permitted to use the library. Follow me. No women or children. Ebros, the Archmaester of the Citadel, is played by Jim Broadbent in super kindly mode. Well-spoken southern accent. We are this world's memory, Samuel Tarly. Without us, men would be little better than dogs. Don't remember any meal but the last. Can't see forward to any but the next. 
And every time you leave the house and shut the door, they howl like you're gone forever. Finally, we have Kyburn, the disgraced former maester and basically a necromancer in as much as this setting allows. Speaks in a kindly, very RP accent, which he maintains whether he's tending to the injured or having people put to death. There's more important things to do with my time than waste them in the Please, presence. Please, Grandmaster, I bear you no ill will. Please forgive me if you can. Overall, I'm giving the maesters six lanced Lewins out of seven. I'm docking a point for the weird dubbing job they did with the Citadel Maester. Join me next time when we'll be casting a critical eye at the wall and those brave fellows that man it. For the final part of the accents of Westeros, before I start to look overseas at Essos and beyond, it's time to analyse the accents of the Night's Watch. Well, the ones I haven't previously covered, and the Wildlings, along with some of the general peasants that live near the wall. To begin, we have Alyssa Thorne. Gruff and surly, Alyssa doesn't seem to enjoy being in the Night's Watch very much. Despite hailing from the Crown Lands, he speaks with a northern accent tinged with a touch of Welsh. Eating the horses was easy. But later when we started to fall, that wasn't easy. Dolorous Ed is miserable and world weary. He hails from the Vale, but sounds like he's from the North. There must be a magical force field that turns people northern as soon as they travel past Moat Kaelin or somewhere. When the White Walkers came, you left me. Aye, we left you. You're fat and you're slow. We didn't want to die. Pip, or Piper, is from the Riverlands and does have a southern accent, so well done, show. You got something right. I've got one. Right through the heart, he's dead. Oh, is it over? Yeah. Well then. Gren is another northerner in accent, if nothing else, as we don't know where he hails from originally, aside from the fact he grew up on a farm. They get him up. Looks like that piggy is done for. Let's get him up. Slowing us down. Just get him up! Ollie was just having a nice day working with his dad before the wildlings slaughtered everyone in his village. Speaks with a northern accent. Telling the wildlings you want to make peace. You're just doing it to trick them. It's not a trick. They burnt my village. They put an arrow through my father's head. Ollie's dad was dreaming lustily of his wife's potatoes when he caught an arrow, ending his appetite and his life. Also speaks with a northern accent. Potatoes. potatoes! Well, no one boils a potato better than your mum. She got The horse ranch owner that Jon Snow fails to kill has an accent that's hard to place, but sounds roughly of the north, I suppose. Let me stand at least. Let me go with a bit of dignity. The woman named only as Mole's Town Whore has a riotous Cockney accent for some unknown reason. Perhaps she travelled up with a relative heading to the wall and decided to stick around to make a quick buck or two. You hear me? Yes. Well, got anything to say? I'm sorry he woke you up. <laughs> oh, I don't care if you're sorry. Carl fucking Tanner, who clearly states he is from Gin Alley in King's Landing, also has a northern accent. I was a fucking legend, Gin Alley. A fucking legend! Honestly, it gets so tiresome. Rast, the sensitive, gentle soul, doesn't have an official place of birth, but speaks with a northern accent, so fair enough there. I wouldn't stand a chance. None of us would. Othel Yarwick, well, you'll never guess what, he has a northern accent too. Unfortunately, he's from the Westerlands, where they don't sound like that. My mother's still living in White Harbour. Could you write it? Tell her I died fighting the wildlings. Bowen Marsh is from the Neck, the boggy part of the North. Speaks with an appropriate accent. You shouldn't be alive. It's not right. Neither was killing me. Corin Halfhand is another Night's Watch member with no confirmed place of origin, and as such was given a Northern accent on the show. There's a fire. People sitting around it have better eyes than yours or mine. When they see us coming, that fire becomes a signal. 
Mance Raider was born beyond the wall and taken in by the Night's Watch before rebelling. Speaks in a northern accent. So, you're Ned Stark's bastard. Thank you for the gift, Lord of Bones. You can leave us. Tormund Giantsbane, the wildling warrior who has a serious crush on Brienne, speaks with a Scandinavian accent, which is a nice touch given the geography of the area. Plenty of little men. Try to put the swords through my heart, and there's plenty of little skeletons buried in the woods. Rattleshirt, the Lord of Bones, had a northern accent in Season 2, but seems to have adopted the more common Scandinavian one in Season 5. Perhaps he was just pretending to impress Egret. We may never find out. We killed his friends. I thought we want to question this one. Last time I saw you, the little crow was your prisoner. The other way around now. One One the Giant gets a line for comedy effect, and I have no idea how to class it, so it will be designated Giant Ease. Lobada, the surly Fen, speaks with a light Scandinavian accent. Keep your glass, King Crow. As soon as you get on his ships, they're gonna slit your throats and dump your bodies to the bottom of the shivering sea. Magnar of the Then has a much more pronounced Scandinavian accent and makes for a very authentic performance. Build your parents. Open your eyes. I'm going to eat them. Oral, the warg and number one egret sib, speaks with a northern accent when he's not cawcawing in eagle form. The fist of the first man. What did you see? <laughs> Dead crows. Jon Snow's Stockholm Syndrome girlfriend E. Grip has a northern accent and really likes using it. Last time you seen a giant, Jon Snow? I don't stay too long, they're shy. When they stop being shy, they get angry. Carsey, despite having a name that's slang for a toilet, certainly doesn't resemble one. Speaks in a Scandinavian accent. The show's really on a roll with a diversity of wildling accents. No sarcasm, it really is. I'll never trust a man in black. But I trust you, Torment. If you say this is the way, Craster, the miserable old prick who begrudgingly helps the Night's Watch at times, speaks in a roaring Welsh accent for some unknown reason. Nah. They're as strong as they can again. Then that's dying. You cut their throats to be done with it. I'll leave them if you've not the stomach. And I'll sort them myself. Gilly, Craster's daughter, sounds very northern. How do you know all that? I read about it in a, a very old book. You know all that from staring at marks on paper. Leaf, the child of the forest, speaks with an eerie southern accent in season four, and then the recast version in season six sounds much more RP. He is lost. Come with me or die with him. Brandon Stark needs you. What? I sit in there and I watch him have his visions and nothing ever happens. He isn't going to stay here forever. The Three-Eyed Raven is a standard posh bloke in Season 4, before being replaced by legendary actor Max von Sydow, who was allowed to use his native Swedish accent in Season 6. I've been many things. Now, I am what you see. I was waiting for you. I don't want to be you. <laughs> I don't blame you. You won't be here forever. Overall, I'm awarding the Night's Watch and the Wildlings seven fooped Carl Tanners out of seven. Sansa. 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 
Well, you asked for it, so here we go. Peter Littlefinger Baelish is a Machiavellian mastermind in both the Song of Ice and Fire books and, well, the first five or six seasons of the show Game of Thrones, in which he is played by Aidan Gillen. However, that's not why we're here today. We're here today to rip the ever-loving piss out of Littlefinger's accent. Well, accents, as it goes. They seem to change and get more bizarre each season, you see. Season 1 Littlefinger sounds like this. Look at you. You know what you want me to do. You know it has to be done. But it's not honourable, so... The words stick in your throat. He sounds like he's reading his lines on a screen inside his head whilst also trying to sound English. I don't remember Mayor Carsetti sounding this stuttery. Later, when he backstabs Ned, he sounds thoroughly snaky like a Disney villain. I did warn you not to trust me. He also gets a long monologue scene, which is hilarious because of the voice he's acting, but I can't show that as it has boobies in it. You know the one. For many years... Most of my life, really. Play with her ass. In season two, we start to get some Irish creeping into his voice. Ah, the late King Renly. Rather a short reign. Murdered by a woman, I hear. So they say. There has been talk of other forces at work. Dark forces. I'm not sure if this was a decision on the actor's part or if even the tone-deaf David and Dan realised he sounded like an utter tool in season one. It's like he can't quite decide on what he wants the character to sound like or he's just taking the piss. Who knows? Season three and he's back to sounding English-ish again with some Irish on his R's, such as the famous Chaos is a Ladder scene. But what do we have left once we abandon the lie? Chaos. A gaping pit waiting to swallow us all. Chaos isn't a pit. Chaos is a ladder. Season 4 and we're in full-on raging Irish mode. He's clearly not even trying to sound like anything else at this point. Apologies, my lady. And to you as well, Baelish. We are treated a bit harshly. You want justice, Lord Royce. I can hardly complain about that. I want the same. There's also the boat scene with Sansa where he sounds like he's trying to be Batman. Where are you taking me? I'm getting married to your Aunt Lysa. She's waiting for us at the Eyrie. You'll be safe there. Maybe his time spent with the big guy... For you. ...rubbed off on him. Season 5 and we have him embracing the accent of a pirate of the high seas. It felt like the safest place. Not for your clientele, clearly. It was an establishment like no other. A sheer range of appetites catered to desires that didn't even exist until we invented them. Season 6's Littlefinger seems to have stabilised his accent now, more in keeping with Season 4. Whenever I consider an action, I ask myself, will this action help to make this picture a reality? Pull it out of my mind and into the world. In his last scene in season 7, Peter seems to cycle through every accent he's ever had in the show, like the T-1000 cycling through all the faces it's used as it melts. It's truly a wonder to behold. Give me a chance to defend myself. I deserve that. I am Lord Protector of the Vale and I command you to escort me safely back to the Eyrie. I think not. Sansa. I beg you. I loved your mother since the time I was a boy. I loved you. More than anyone. The thing I don't get is why Aiden never used his real speaking voice. Here's how he sounds in real life. I really did enjoy playing that character on Game of Thrones and being part of that, you know, just spectacular um, story weaving that so many people you know, invested themselves in. That would have worked fine for the show. Overall, I'm going to award Peter Littlefinger one chaotic ladder out of seven. Bye then.